you know, when we go to Fredericksburg, I'm yes. going to like purposefully look for a really terrible. I know, book, and, and I, I need to take you because I'm gonna that... shove it in your face. Okay. <laughs> Welcome to Chicken Adobo for the Soul, two siblings talking about life like we know what we're doing. I'm Rachel. And I'm Terrence. I'm full. <laughs> Would you hurts. care to share with the class why? Oh, uh, my stomach hurts, man. No, uh, we... No, I don't want to tell them this is... I don't even know how big that steak was. I'm pretty sure it was like 14 ounces. Okay, there you go. Yeah, so it, it's what, Mother's Day today? Yeah. Or tomorrow, sorry. Is We celebrated Mother's Day. Um, somebody definitely, I shouldn't say overindulge because I feel like when you finish your entree, I mean, you, you adequately indulge. No, dude, I live in America. Thank you very much. <laughs> they put food in front of my face. I'm going to eat it. That's, that's how this works, Rachel. Yeah. So I don't, I'm not from Europe where they give you like a tiny little half plate and then you're supposed to take one bite and then go home. I'll just say this. John John cleaned the entire plate while I couldn't even finish half my salad. Plus my salad, plus bread, plus her salad, plus pecans or whatever. Oh, plus the French fries. Oh, yeah. And the fries. Come on. And you still asked me what was for dessert. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. So you overindulged. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> But otherwise, did you have a nice day today? It was great, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, we bought, well, I bought a pair of pants with your expert help, I suppose. Whoa. Lower your expectations, but thank you. Oh, yeah. Okay, there you go. Yeah. I told you to get both pairs of pants. I'm just saying, you know, I was trying to be frugal <laughs> and minimalist and try to make one pair of pants do everything. Which you all should know, today's word of the day that came up on my app was frugal. I'm not kidding. Yeah. Thanks, Merriam-Webster. <laughs> it's good. It's good. Perfect. Perfect timing. So I'm actually really excited about today's topic. Yes, yes, I can tell. Uh, I don't know. I, I do know why for obvious reasons, but I think I got more excited the more I realized what we were going to talk about. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's fun because like the, <laughs> the the notes that I had put together for this was pretty bare bones and then you just kind of like took off with it. Like, yeah, I don't know. I guess it. I guess I'm more passionate about it than I thought. So um, what we'll be discussing books um Ooh, i know chill <laughs> very anticlimactic i'm sorry to the nine <laughs> listeners <laughs> yeah. oh we didn't gain a single we just, one <laughs> <laughs> we just we just dropped down to like two listeners for this episode they just clicked off immediately oh, no. uh yeah we're today we're talking about books just anywhere from who what when where why mm -hmm. um and yeah he's right he drafted up some notes he actually presented this topic and i i don't know why i didn't even think about it but um very bare notes if you will and i have scribbles all over my page of more more, more <laughs> no, stuff you, i want to no, talk yeah about. you filled it up you filled it up actually and all i have is really just responses to your questions that was <laughs> that was it i i don't know what, what i was gonna even do in the first place really yeah so yeah. this is this is you you got the ball well i mean so i guess what is it i guess i'll just ask you I'll ask you first off. Oh, wow. What okay. is it? Put me on the spot. Yeah. Uh, one, two, three, go. What uh what is it about books? What is it, it just what books? <laughs> I'm gonna directly quote uh what do you call it? Rory from Gilmore Girls. Oh you know, my god, of course you quote Gilmore Cause, Girls. Cause I, I love her, but <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, yeah, that's really awkward. Uh they smell nice, you know. They do. Yeah, yeah. They you you can't smell your iPad. <laughs> I mean, you could. That would be weird. You can smell your books and they'd be normal. Yeah. Well, at least I think it's normal. You ever Ladies. smell a really bad book? Yeah. Really? Yeah. My, my okay. So haha, I've I'm never. Gonna, I'm gonna partially flex my my first edition history of World War II by Winston Churchill. You, uh, wow, you just flexed. A oh lot. yeah. No, they're <laughs> old and they smell bad because they weren't taken good care of by their previous owner, and mm -hmm. so uh, yeah, like uh, kind of moldy, but uh, you know, do what you can. Um, yes, I do have bad smelling books. You know, just like we have bad smelling humans. Yeah. Okay. Not me. That's fair. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't think I've ever smelled a bad book. Or maybe I don't smell them enough. I don't know. Fair. So we um, we record in my she shed, which is uh, my library, if you will. I have a little over... I've, I, I think I've, I think I break 300. I've got probably about 300 books in this 
room alone. Um, and it's just an average size room, but, um, oh, so that way, like 11 by 11 or something. Maybe yeah. 12 by 12? Just about, just about, mm-hmm. um, got a wide collection and I love my library. I wrote down for myself, what does my dream library look like? I actually don't know the answer to that. You, know what I mean? you, can, you can cover up your window and then have even more wall space right there. Uh, my previous she sheds, I've had, I've had two previous she sheds and they never had windows. So this window is very important to me. Uh, so yes. unfortunately I cannot. Okay, that's fine. Um, but I, I think my library is really at a good place. Mm-hmm. Um. I spoke in the last episode that I I think I've gotten things in my life where they should be. It's not, you know, I'm not purchasing left and right. Uh, But I think it's at a good place where I have a fair amount of classics, poetry, fiction, nonfiction. And I think I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. I mean, do you have, is there one particular genre that you focus on in your library? Yeah, my my collection is primarily like nonfiction. Okay. Like history is really, right? I have a whole a bookshelf just that is just purely history. And then I'm really honestly working on my second bookshelf now, thanks to all the textbooks that I've had for <laughs> for this year for my master's, right? Then I have a, a very tiny section of what nonfiction, you know, um yeah, I just don't spend that on much time on it. Whatever nonfiction books I do have, they're in uh, ebook format attached to my Google account. Mm-hmm. And whenever I'm just walking around and whatever, I'll just, you know, sure, pull it up and read a few pages. Okay. Yeah. But the the heavy lifting is really the the nonfiction stuff. That's what I use for reference. That's what I use for research and study and whatnot. And for, for being a historian. There you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think a goal for myself is to, uh, it's never going to happen, but... Yeah. read all of these books but there are a good handful of books where i have post it notes sticking out of them mm-hmm. and for whatever reason i marked it something resonated with me and i just wanted so that my goal is to just very oddly enough have post it notes sticking out of them with notes i'm not a fan of writing in books <gasps> so convenient though i oh do you write inside books some of them yeah oh no i can't i don't i don't know why i oh. i do and i can't get myself to dog ear pages. oh yeah i'll never do that no hell no yeah but for some reason it's perfectly okay for me to place an adhesive paper <laughs> that most likely will lift the ink off of the paper yeah because yeah. i mean it's it's when you when you makes fold, no sense yeah when you fold a page right it just makes it so that the book doesn't close flush anymore. It's not perfectly flat when you close it anymore. I don't know. I feel like I'm hurting it. Yeah. I can't, I can't dog ear a page. Yeah, no. What the hell? What, what? No, that's what bookmarks are for. That's what I guess like notes are for, you know, for somewhere else. Like have an index of your your your, your highlights, I guess, mm-hmm. somewhere else separate from the book. That's a thing. You know, mm-hmm. you can definitely do that. But don't don't physically damage the integrity of the book. Yeah. Lord. Which um, goes into the first topic that we not, not I don't think we debated, but no, no, no. it was a uh, hardback versus paperback. Oh no, never mind. Yes, this is totally a debate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, to your point of you know you don't want to damage the book. I I will always pick up a paperback copy because I like the. Um, I think it shows the journey that I've taken it on. Okay, wherever I'm at, I will. If that's the book I'm reading, I'm taking it with me. Okay, fair. Now I'm sitting directly next to one of your bookshelves, <laughs> and the first book that I saw as I looked over is The Historian. Yeah. If you look at the spine, well, none of you can see it, but I can. Yeah. The spine. If they look at the spine, <laughs> the spine on this book is pristine. Yeah. Right. Tell me when I should stop. To I'm, what? Don't break the spine. I'm at 45 degrees. Don't break the spine because I haven't even read that book yet. 90 degrees. Tell me when to stop. Listen. Listen to me. 100 and... Okay, stop. Okay, okay. There you see. Yeah. With a hardback, I don't have to worry about that. No, I don't... I can open the book all the way out. You're still breaking it in a sense. It's just that cardboard piece. Make sure you put that exactly where you found it. I can tell where it is. (laughs) Uh, with the thing about the hardback is it's being covered by that, you know, and there are people out there who know the anatomy of a book, but there it's covered by that piece of cardboard. So you're still breaking the spine, I'll but break your spine it, <laughs> in a strange way. I will say I just like paperback because I get to see the journey I'm 
it's been on. Now that particular book, he picked up a copy of Favorite Fairy Tales by uh, illustrated by Greg Hillbrandt. And I actually have had this book since I was, uh, you know what, just... Okay, I'm it not was mess it with was in one. my it was in my parents' house, yep, and I okay, took it with me. Not messing with this one. I'm going to go find something else that looks stupid, and I'll mess with that. You won't. Oh lord. I think I think for me, what I will say about my library is there is a lot of nostalgia with each book. So I don't know. I mean, hell, I have a copy of. I don't think anybody may remember this. Maybe people our age may remember this. Did you ever read the uh, Magic Treehouse series? I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> I hope so. I grew up in the Philippines, Rachel. Oh, that's right. Our magic treehouse was literally just a tree, and we had to imagine a treehouse okay. in it. I hope, one of, <laughs> I hope one of the nine listeners that we have knows what I'm talking about. Magic Treehouse, it's a young adult series, and it's about two kids. I don't know if they're just friends or if they're siblings, but they time travel, and each title of the book was based off of an oh, alphabet an letter. No, of an alphabet letter. Oh, so there's 26 of them. Yes. Okay. So I have Tonight on the Titanic. T, okay. Yes. Um, and that's probably, I don't even know where in the world, where in this library it is. Yeah, but what kind of librarian are you if you don't know where these books are? I mean, you're sitting in front of three of my, sh- three out of the five shelves that I have. They're all, okay, yeah, fair. So it's somewhere in here, but that's, I think that's my youngest book. And I also have a Goosebumps book as well. So there's a lot of nostalgia with each book. But sometimes I know where I was. Sometimes I know who I was with. Sometimes... I know the 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 synopsis and I and I could tell you what about it, you know, spoke to me and I wanted to have it in my library and I had to have it. Yeah, and I think that's a really nice thing about books, right? Is that on top of the message that they have within the covers, there is a very strong attachment or there's a time and place and emotion and people surrounding it. There's a circumstance that's attached to each of these books that you know are either impressed on you or really inform your view like each book is a snapshot of who you are at that time and then can direct or point however which way your life has gone since Mm -hmm. i think that's a super nice feature or i um and i was saying a moment ago that i have i think i was looking through my library and I was telling John John that I think I have one copy. You know, when you're in high school and they make you buy mm-hmm. the the required reading, I have one book left from high school and it's the <laughs> it's the No Fear Shakespeare, Romeo and Juliet. Are you familiar with No Fear Shakespeare? Nope. It's um basically one side of the book is the actual text and then the other side is oh. translated. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That and makes life a lot easier. Yeah. And I remember where I was. I remember who I was crushing on no, in no. that class and oh, I no. you know and it just kind of came flooding back but yeah there's there is something that I I am connected to every probably every single book in this room. So what you're saying is if I were to take one book from this library I will eventually know it. You will eventually, not immediately. No, not immediately. Okay, bet. I'm not, you know, I'm not neurotic, but eventually I will know it. Don't do it because I will oh. feel it. <laughs> I was going to test it. I was going to find a random book. No, I, I I, I'm not even going to look. I will. I will. I can say this. I will eventually know because I forgot I had let somebody borrow a book and I was looking for it because I wanted to read it. Yeah. Because I was on the first book, but um, she had already read the first one. So she won the second one. Um, and I was I was tearing through my library and I was searching all throughout the house. I, I sort of only keep my if I'm reading a book, I usually only keep it in just a few places the coffee table or the nightstand next to my bed, but I could not for the life of me. So I had to go buy a new copy. So I'll promise you now, if you are missing a book, and of course you're going to suspect me, right? Absolutely. (laughs) (laughs) And you ask me, do you have XYZ book? And if I do have it, I will admit 100% right away. Yes, I do have it. But if I tell you no, it's because I honestly don't. You will have to work hard to put that fire of suspicion out. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, like, I'm, I'm being like honest here, right? Like, if I do have it, I will give it back because that was that's the evidence that you know you do have these connections with your books. But if I, I think... actually don't have it, I'm not gonna. I mean, I will tell you, I don't have it. Well, that's you, good. You screwed up. You you've missed something somewhere. Um, no, but <laughs> <laughs> I I have trust issues with okay. my books. Yeah, like that that fairy tale book. But something in my something in my spine just kind of clicked a little bit, and I thought, oh God, please be careful. Put it back. Put it back. Put it back. Right now. I don't. I don't know. I just. Yeah. Um. 
I think everything in my library, I, yeah, if something was missing, I would know it eventually because mm-hmm. I, I will, at some point I've had to look at a book to see if I have it. Okay. So there's that. But um, I mean, uh, so I think I, I've kind of expressed my neurotic need and psychopathic love for books. Mm-hmm. How about you? They exist. It's cool. Oh, good. I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think I briefly already discussed what I feel and think about them just a second ago, you know, that they are great little snapshots of life. Or at least if not that, then they're kind of aspirational. They represent aspirations, mm-hmm. right? Because even if you are the biggest bookworm, you when you buy, let's say, a stack of books or some books, you're not going to read them all right away. No. Right? Yeah. I mean, modern life dictates that we just can't commit to, you know, uh, reading a book cover to cover in one sitting anymore, especially as adults. Like when I was a kid, when I was a teenager, right, I did that a lot with uh, Magic the Gathering books. And I would tear through a 600 page book, like a Harry Potter book in a couple days because I had the time. I, I Homework was a joke. Anyway, uh, but now it's when you buy books, or at least when I buy books, they're kind of in a sense aspirational because I would very much like to know or understand or have this book shape or influence or inform my life, but I honestly probably can't get to it all right away. It's it's kind of a disservice to the book itself just to be bought and then just sit on a bookshelf. But at the same time, when I look at it on the shelf, I can tell that, oh man, at that point in my life, I really wanted to know X, Y, Z. At that time, I really wanted to be more like this and so on, you know? So that's also another aspect of it that is really nice about having all these books. Mm -hmm. They are windows into a person's character, personality, dreams, goals, whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I I have to agree with you. It's just, we've just run out of time for it. I mean, (laughs) shout out to all the, to the English department of Marymount. I did not have enough time to read some of these books. I am not ashamed to admit it now, Uh, but you got your diploma. (laughs) What? That's not what I mean. Oh, but... oh, certainly. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, no, sorry. Sorry to all the professors I've had. I, I do miss <laughs> you all, and I hope you all are doing well. But when you assigned us to read a book, I was also working 40 hours a week mm-hmm. and still and and going to school. And I thought, how the hell am I going to read this Spark notes. in two weeks? Spark notes. Spark uh, yes. So it was that a lot of conversations with fellow students, a lot of brainstorming. Yeah. Hey, did you get to this part? Yeah. What's this about? <laughs> um, yeah. But I kept all of the books that I had to purchase for college, which, side note, I probably spent in my whole time at Marymount as an English major and getting these classics and hunting them down. You oh. know they are dirt cheap. I, I probably spent maybe a total of $200 my whole college career on oh, books. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, because yeah. like in in science, one textbook is 200 bucks. Yeah, that's true. So that's true. when I got into all of my English classes, I was like, hell yeah. I only have to spend 50 cents on this classic. I'll buy 14 <laughs> just because. Right. But I, I kept all of my all of the books I, I had to buy uh, through college because I do hope to go back and read them. I did for one book. Um, and it did, I got to actually enjoy it. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Without having to cram and try and read a paper and analyze it and work at the same time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, I think you're right. A lot of the books in this room are at the time I wanted to read this. I mean, hell I have to, um, I'm actually reading a series by Deborah Harkness, I think is her last name is the discovery of witches. Mm-hmm. And, um, they turned it into a TV show on, um, Sundance and, um, I finished the first book, watched the first season, and before I know it, season two is already out, and I thought, crap, I got to read this book. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. <laughs> so I feel rushed. Yeah, yeah, but there's impetus to complete it now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So uh, what do you shop for when you're in the store, when you're at the bookstore? Uh, I don't know. Whatever's cool, I guess. Yeah? I, I can't even honestly say I don't know because I <laughs> I went to a bookstore, uh, Second Story Books in D.C., right? Uh, shout out to those dudes. Great place. Uh, two weeks, uh, three weeks, I don't know, a while ago. And I always make a beeline for the, the history section, nonfiction, right? Big, big into that. And a lot of my book choices right now is really informed by 
uh, the kind of histories I want to study. Of course, a lot of people are familiar with like the great man, great woman, whatever theory or understanding of history, because that's what's taught in schools. Like George Washington did X, Y, Z. Napoleon did ABC, you know, and so on and so forth. Right. But there are hundreds of thousands of billions of stories of the normal people who have lived throughout history and their stories never, ever get told. And I'm really interested in those now. That's awesome. Yeah. So, you know, uh, the one of the big, not big, uh, one of the books I bought when I went to Second Story is uh, Nelson's Navy. And this is a story of Horatio Nelson, the great victor of Trafalgar, destroyed the French and Spanish fleets. Anyway, point being, uh, a lot of his sailors don't get any well, maybe not credit, but they don't get any time in the spotlight like he did because, you know, he was the celebrity, right? But this book is just talking about how those men and, well, men, all men, right, lived on ships and how they spent their time on shore. And that's cool. I want to know more about the common people. And so that's that's what I look for now. But back then, it's really, before that, I didn't really have anything to really focus or guide my 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 purchases. Okay. What about you? Depending on what's first or what the layout is of the bookstore. Oh, no. It's uh, yeah. usually fiction, poetry. Uh, I have been moving into mystery and thriller. Okay, yeah. With the hope of not scaring myself before I fall asleep. Nice. Because um, then you're going to dream about all that. <laughs> oh, yeah. I hate that. I don't want any nightmares. Uh, but yeah, it's usually whatever's first. I do like to browse in through the new releases and see what's come up. Mm -hmm. uh, I have been paying attention to covers, and it seems like every once in a while, uh, new releases all have the same kind of themed cover. Uh, I think what I'm seeing now is more floral and bright colors. I don't know if that's because we're in better weather. but I, I have no idea. Yeah, so that's kind of where I'll go into. Um, I was floating in nonfiction for a while, uh, reading biographies. Mm -hmm. um, Those are like the most popular types of history books, too, on top of that. Yeah. In, in case people didn't know. Everybody yeah. Everybody loves biographies. Everybody loves biographies. Yeah. Um, at the time uh, when I was real, I think the last time I was really heavy book hunting, I had just... I just finished Rain on the CW, and I have no idea what any of that is. It's it's like the it's a great it's one of those shows where it's so bad, but you can't stop watching, mm -hmm. and it's just an awful depiction of Mary Queen of Scots, and oh, you just okay. know it's not true. Oh, Rain, R E I G N. Yes, yeah. Oh, okay. And it's a bunch of you know people my age who are celebrities, obviously, and it's just. It's just such a bad depiction. Like, you know that that's not what happened. But it's so cool. But the rivalry between um, Elizabeth and Mary, I couldn't get that out of my head. And I, mm -hmm. I love European history. Yeah. Um, and so I was searching through thrift stores and Second and Charles looking for books on that. So I did manage to get a few on that. Uh, but yeah, mostly fiction and poetry. Mm -hmm. So I think that's actually like an awesome segue, right? Because uh, you talk about loving European history, loving the uh, the drama between God, Mary, Queen of Scots, and Elizabeth, uh, Queen of England. Mm -hmm. uh, because my a very formative book for me when I was growing up is this little book on the Spanish Armada, right? And the Spanish Armada threatened the British Isles when Elizabeth was queen after, you know, Mary had her head cut off and all that. Spoiler alert, she dies. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's been like 500 years. I think it's okay. You know, some people don't know. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Sorry. And you just um, ruined the movie. I'm going to put that. that in the show notes to uh, so people don't. <laughs> oh my God. What a strange, what a strange show note. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Mary Queen of Scots is dead. Dead as f. <laughs> oh, whoops. Um, yeah. So. For me, like one of the most formative books in my younger years is like the Spanish Armada. And that really got me set on the path to loving history or being very interested in what the hell history is all about or the past is all about, you know, anything like that for you. Um, goodness, what? I mean, aside from yeah. the, this fairy tale book that I what pulled text, off the shelf. What text made me really be a lover of literature? You know, a lover of hospitality. Yeah, it's or that. Just kidding. Um, I, you know, and I don't, I don't want anybody, I don't want to feel shameful about this, but I also don't like reading it now, but it, it's going to have to be Shakespeare, Romeo and Juliet. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Um, That's probably what, yeah, probably what ignited 
this yeah. this this passion for books. That's a pretty heavy one to to get you started. But I hate reading it now. Oh, well, and I hate right. watching adaptations of it. I hate it because I think more so because it's kind of like, well, how different are you going to make it? We both we all know what happens. Yeah. Spoiler alert. They both die. No way. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not right. Uh, <laughs> put that in the show notes. Oh. So, but then I think from there I grew. Uh, I, I will always love Macbeth mm-hmm. <laughs> because I love Lady <laughs> Macbeth. She is crazy. She's a psychopath. But you know what? It's a big dick, Dion. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, what John John's re- oh what John John's referring to is, uh, and and I'll tie this back to people can do other things with can put their own spins on everything else on other Shakespearean plays, but I but Romeo and Juliet. That's kind of where my stance is. Oh, that's the line. All right. But what he's referring to is we went to go see Drunk Shakespeare in New York City, and if you haven't seen this, it, is in the pre-COVID times. You have to see it. Because I'll tell you this, my husband, complete end of the spectrum. I I don't take him into bookstores because I feel like I'm killing him slowly. But he said, "Ah, I don't know if I'm going to like this drunk Shakespeare. I said, let me make it clear to you. When you buy your ticket, depending on what ticket you buy, you're going to get a shot of tequila. And it's six actors. Uh, One of them is just mind-blowingly drunk at that point (laughs) because they've already had to put on two shows but they're doing shakespeare drunk Mm -hmm. uh well i guess i should say five of the actors are sober where one is really drunk yeah and uh, (laughs) (laughs) it's so good it's just it's just so good i think at one point in the play the drunk actor whips out a guitar and starts playing in the air tonight and then changes it to eminem's lose yourself and then they just jump right back in and start, you know, going right into Shakespeare. Yep. Um, but Macbeth, yes. Uh, what was the scene where they were talking about? One of the sons. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna say because I have no shame. Big Dick Dion. Yeah. Oh, was, okay. Uh, what, it, I I can't remember the scene, but it, there was a reference to a son, someone's. Son. And it was like what one of the sober actors says. What is his name? Yeah. And the drunk is, actor yeah. screamed. <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> screamed so Big good. Dick Dion. So good. Again, and all the other actors have to work with it. Yeah, because that's the, that's like the cardinal rule of improv. You never say no, so you have to agree <laughs> to the whatever people put down and roll with it. And the rest of the play, that character was there. Poor actor. Poor actor. <laughs> Big Dick Dion was just part of the play at that point. So to my point, sorry, <laughs> you can do a lot with other Shakespearean plays. <laughs> Um, you were talking about Macbeth. I don't know what you can do with Romeo and Juliet, but Macbeth, yes. I, I do love Macbeth. My absolute favorite, again, because Lady Macbeth is a psychopath, and mm. I I love her. But um, I think my love for literature just sort of escalated from there. Shout out to Marymount. They opened my eyes to a whole new world. I mean, hell, I think my last year, I was um, we were just tearing apart Alexander Pope and mm. never thought to read Alexander Pope. It was a very long class. Sorry, Dr. Howe, I got to say it. It's about a three hour class, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a wonderful class. I think, yes. Yeah, so Easy think to say that now. You Easy to say that a. now. I yeah. know. Can't take it back. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. I think Shakespeare. So to answer the original question, Shakespeare, I think, kickstarted Just everything. The formative. Yeah, yes. just like I think everybody. Um, I have a great love for Edgar Allan Poe. All right. Edge Lord. Yes. I love the the dark and scary, the very creepy. Um, probably um, uh, Telltale Heart. Uh, and oh my God, I'm blanking. I can't think of <laughs> I can't think the, of the title. The Raven. No, 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 no. I mean, everybody loves the Raven, obviously. Yeah. Um, it's the Annabelle. one where. It, no, but I do love that also. Uh, it's the one where he. Um, Kill, not he doesn't kill the man, but he leaves the guy in the wine cellar inside the walls. It's I gonna don't come. Know. To, I know it's gonna come to me, but yeah, I'm so, yeah, I'm not. Those are the only three works of his I know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think all that. I I, I have. I'm very open minded with literature. Okay, I good. think. I think. Mm-hmm. I don't know. We'll find out. No, I mean there is still plenty of wall space, plenty of room here to expand your library. So. Um, another debate that we had, which we actually did, we actually really finish paperback versus hardback. Yeah, hardback is superior. 
That's oh. there's, there's no question about it. Why do you like hardback? Uh, because I can bash your face with it. Okay. You ever watch The Born Identity where he yeah. took a book and then he just Everybody jammed it into his, into the bad guy's throat? You can't do that with a paperback. That book would crumble. That's you have to put a little bit more strength. No, no, hardback. It's just I'm going to touch this book in your throat and you're dead. All right, all That's right. So, oh, yeah, this this is not a debate. You're 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 <laughs> stupid. You're wrong. Sorry. I like paperback because I like the distress that it gets <laughs> after the distress after bashing it into somebody's throat. Yeah. <laughs> I, was it even the Born Identity? Was it? Is it? It's the second one, right? I don't know. You no, know, it's one of the Born movies. One the the one with uh Matt Damon, mm. not the other small guy. Hey, that one was pretty good though. It was okay. It shot it in the Philippines. Okay. You know, all Filipinos watch that. I'm sure they did. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, oh yeah, I buy my like fried bananas. Oh yeah, from there. I know that place. <laughs> yeah, <I'm> like, <laughs> That's awful. I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, all right, there, there a- goes our international audience. <laughs> yep. All right. Back down to two listeners. Ah. Uh, here's another question. Okay. So, e- or I guess I'll say this: ebooks, audiobooks, and just r- run of the mill, smelly, moldy books. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> What's your stance on those? I'm not against any of them uh, okay. because, like, r- I am a h- huge utilitarian. Right, practicality is king for me. So, on my commutes to and from work or to anywhere really, that's more than half an hour. Yeah, I'll put I'll put on a podcast, or if I don't have a podcast, if I've already finished all my podcasts for that week, yeah, I'll put on an audiobook, and then there's that. Like driving here is about an hour to your place from mine is about an hour, so plenty of time. But then the ebooks are also super nice because when I'm at sea, you know, I can't bring a whole library's worth of books with me, and that's really where it came from. You know, I'll have my tablet, and then I'll just pass out reading whatever before I go to bed. That's assuming I even have enough time to really indulge in a book before bed. And so that's useful there. But outside of that, I'm, I have no qualms against any other way to consume uh, literature. Okay. I think you might have stronger opinions. Um, It has changed over the years. Oh, okay. I I was against audio... Uh, I'm sorry, not audio books, but I, I guess I was against the developing technology of, mm-hmm. of books in literature. I can tell because the Audible gift card is I still know. on your fridge. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no, and I do. I promise you, I do mean to use that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I, um, I don't know. I just, um, and it's changed over the years because you're right. Where, you know, I, I could be schlepping kids down the street and I don't want to carry a book with me. Maybe maybe a Kindle is lighter. It, well, a Kindle is lighter. Yes. Um, and holds more. Um, I did think about buying a Kindle, but then I thought, darn it. I, I, okay, I'll say this. I was thinking about buying a Kindle with the intention of copying my entire library into that book, into the Kindle. And then I thought, well, great. Now I have to buy 300 books again. Oh no! Which I've Actually, done. Yeah, yeah. So that was a, that was a stupid window that I or a stupid idea that I threw out the window. I'm definitely open to audiobooks, um, ebooks. I'm open to, but I mean, I I think I have a great library right now. That again, my goal is to, uh, you know, read all of them yeah. and stick post-it notes in them. Yeah, you can always just like bring one with you when like a in a I tote do. bag wherever. And yeah, whenever I travel or go somewhere, I am bringing one book with me. Yeah. Um, I do envy the people that can read like five books at a time. Yeah, I don't know. How the I don't hell know that how happens. they do that. Yeah, I had a I had an ex who was like, oh, I have like four books on my nightstand, and, and I they're just... all at like different points. Yeah, in the book. like what the hell? Yeah, how are you doing that? You neurotic sob. How are I never you told splitting her that. your lover, brain but... like that? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like I have to be fully in- involved in the book in one book. Yeah, but I, I am envious of people that can read like fourteen books at it's... a time. It's insane, yeah. And still go to work and still oh, yeah. do everything else. And just not have to worry about like, oh, I can't remember what happened last in this Yeah, thing. like how are you not blending yeah, the stories? Exactly. I don't know. I don't know. Props don't know. to them, whomever whoever those people are. Uh so I'll ask you favorite or first children's book that you've ever read. Whichever one you remember. Hungry, hungry hip. No, Caterpillar. The the I keep messing it up because anyway, the, the Caterpillar <laughs> book where he eats like a bunch of fruit and stuff and Okay. Yeah. Ugh. Have you ever gone back to read that book? No. 
Why? Because I'm not a child anymore. I'm an adult. Matter. I'm a grown ass man. Well, it doesn't Respect matter. my authority. Oh my god! I really slammed on the table. I didn't mean to do that. Why not? I don't know. Whatever. Because I'm a man. You ever? You never thought to go? Okay, so mine. Is... I'm just kidding. I've just never had access to it. I've never. I haven't seen one in a while. <laughs> uh, do I actually have one? Oh yeah, that'd be kind of cool. What is it? It's the it's the it's the hungry, caterpillar, hungry caterpillar or that's right? green and with a yeah, red yeah, face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I might actually have one. That'd be cool. Um, I have mine is Doctor Seuss's The Lorax. Uh, I've read it. Was that one of those canceled books? <laughs> no, just kidding. Let's not get no. political here. <laughs> that was uh, uh, that was one I read numerous times throughout the years, mm-hmm. uh, just to see if anything changes. Uh, and I mean, I still, I still love it. All right. Awesome. Okay. So I'll go with favorite or first young adult book. Ender's Game. Okay. Absolutely. Ender's Game. Have you read it since then? Yes. Multiple times. Okay. So good. Any changes? Anything? Nope. It's, uh, continues to inform, uh, actually it really continues to inform my leadership style in the military. Being very empathetic to people's needs and their motivations and who they are foundationally who they are right because if you can understand how people tick understand how people get motivated to do whatever it is that they need to do the more effective you can be and the more effective they can be right so yes ender's game is something i i revisit often okay yeah um first adult book wait no what's your first young adult oh, book Come first on, man. uh okay first your favorite young adult book yeah uh goosebumps night at the wax museum what the <laughs> Okay, no, that's fine. That's cool. No, it's um, well, why? It's, uh, I mean, not not why. I guess uh, <laughs> if it's your first one, then there's no why. But if it's your favorite one, then why? It's my first and favorite, I guess. Okay, I, I think it's because it was my first book where you get to choose which path you want to take. I, and I guess I should say oh. this: I'm not familiar with all of the Goosebumps books. Oh, I should have mentioned Choose Your Own Adventure. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. So it was a Choose Your Own Adventure yeah. book, um, and it was also really scary. Yeah. At the time. I mean, that- <laughs> Um, okay, so first adult book. Playboy? First adult book outside of the young adult <laughs> section. God. You know, technically, Playboys are still outside. You of know the what adult. I mean? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> now, like, Playboy has, like, these classy coffee table books, you know? That's a book. Uh, you see that red book right yes, there? Yes, that's what I was referring to. <laughs> yeah. So what I'm referring to is a, a great thrift store find, but I have a collection of all Playboy cartoons, mm-hmm. uh, some of which are fantastic. <laughs> okay. no, so you see, you <laughs> admit it right there. <laughs> all right, serious question. First okay, adult book. Fine, fine. Out, and what grown I mean by up, adult, grown yeah. Up book. Outside of the young adult section. Yeah. Uh, I wrote down Lord of the Rings because, I mean, I it's not something that like, kids would read it was never really intended to be a book read by kids right it was supposed to be like this allegory of yeah western civilization and so yes uh definitely lord of the rings but i just read it because it was like oh wow killing giant spiders and orcs and stuff <laughs> uh, yeah it was pretty cool uh Sting. <laughs> mine was suzanne's diary for nicholas by james patterson i have zero idea what and then i read the notebook Okay, I've seen that movie. Yeah, <laughs> I and I read The Notebook uh, at a young age where probably that sex scene should not have been oh, read man. by somebody my age. Yeah. Wait, was it really graphic? Uh, yeah, there was, there oh, was okay. a good amount of pages. Jordan Sparks, right? Uh, Jordan Sparks is the American Idol singer. <laughs> oh, wait, who? What? Nicholas Sparks. <laughs> Wow, I'm sorry. I'm very impressed. You can't remember where we ate last week, but you remember Jordan Sparks. I don't know. Is she cute? I'm going to look her up, actually. (laughs) Oh, my God. I'm highly impressed. I'm just saying, Nicholas Sparks is the the author, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I meant. (laughs) So while you're looking that up, I'll ask you, favorite required school reading? Hold on. I'm on images. (laughs) Oh, she cute. Okay. Are we done? Oh, she cute. I put a ring on it. <laughs> uh, sorry, what was that? Favorite required school. Writer. Oh, so I think it would it would be like a tie. Well, no, it would it would definitely have been Ender's Game also. But then thinking more about it, I kind of lean a little more towards Great Gatsby, okay. right? Because 
I don't know the whole. It's obvious. I mean, everybody, everybody who says they love Great Gatsby seems to love it for the same reasons. What is that? Uh, I think it's for the glamorous unknown life of Gatsby. No, uh, because Gatsby never got the girl. That is also true. Gatsby never got the girl. What's the girl's name again? Great question. It, you know why? Here's why I, I don't I like that. that. that yeah, I, I she her. is so stupid. So she is so stupid. Something with an E, anyway. It's been a while, but yeah. yeah. Oh, no, because yeah, he spends his whole life working towards... Her. Her, yeah, and like winning her affection and, you know, building this entire life for himself to have her and to entertain her in it and to... So that... Because if he didn't have that life, she would never have even considered or thought about him, mm-hmm. right? You know, and then he's also this young, aspirational, like, guy in the military, <laughs> like, yours truly, <clears throat> who comes home and then he's like, hey, what's up, girl? I'm cool. I'm awesome now. We still gonna get together. <laughs> and then and they don't, you know? And But at the same time, like, we're looking at all this from Nick's point of view slash yeah. Gatsby's point of view, where he could probably be trumping things up or, you know, like, overselling himself. And, you know, if that's the case, then damn, he got me good. Yeah. But... As a young reader looking at this without even being critical about it, I was like, man, I could see myself being Gatsby. That's, you know, there's this girl I'm super crushing on. And, you know, if I were to, you know, go out there, adventure in the world and come back a hero, she would totally fall for me too. But then I think it's all going to be tragic anyway. She'd never, even if I was, even if I was so cool, she'd still never love me. You're <laughs> What kind of accent almost yeah, just came out of your I, mouth? I don't know. That was the ETH. ETH. <laughs> and whatever. It's fine. Uh, yeah. Uh, so that's that. That's why I like Gatsby is so okay. appealing. The 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 heart wrenching drama. Uh, I wrote Macbeth for mine because of big. Never mind. Yeah. Definitely not that. Yeah. Okay. Not because of Dion. Not not because of Dion. Yeah. I did read uh, Cat on a Hot Tin Roof in high school, oh. which I love. Yeah. Absolutely love. I absolutely love. And the, the movie, Paul Newman, mm-hmm. wonderful. All right. Wonderful. Zero idea what any of those are. Of the- oh, you <laughs> should at least watch it. It's just, it's very good. Okay. Uh, favorite series? I had mentioned it earlier in the in the show, but Magic the Gathering. Okay. Any of those books from the late 90s to the early 2000s, all those series. It's a long series of books, but yeah, like I said earlier, I would spend whatever allowance I had left on these books and destroy them in two days, three days. Just like how Harry, how Harry Potter kids like devour those books. Mm-hmm. That was me for Magic the Gathering. Mm. Then mine was um, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Ah, okay. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, yeah. That series was the first fiction piece i read after a phase of nonfiction, mm-hmm. and after a phase of just not uh really having time to to read um we actually had a reverse effect i i think most people read a book and then when they find out it's been adapted into a movie or tv series then they watch it for me i actually watched the movie um the daniel craig and rooney mara version of it oh yeah um i watched that and that it, that prompted me to read the book, and I absolutely loved it. Elizabeth Salander is a badass female character. She's probably psycho, which is great. Yeah. Um, Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. It's about a hundred pages first of a description of Sweden, so you have to get through that, oh, no. and then it really gets into the yeah get gets into it. Um, and the author. It's like the Lord of the Rings. First hundred pages about a blade of grass. I know you got to get through that. Yeah. Get through the blade of grass first. Yeah. Uh, the author passed away writing only three books and then, Oof. Uh, you know, ended it. I guess I should say this. It ended okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, then another author picked it up. Another Swedish author picked it up. So, okay. Um, that's something I need to. I, I've actually. That is one book that i've read over and over i've already read the girl with the dragon tattoo maybe three times because when i found the second book i didn't buy the first three books together Hmm. um i got the first book read it then i got the second book after some time reread the first then read the second and then read the first again when i got the third so i just for some reason i needed to do lots of uh rereading there yeah that's okay yeah, so that was one I, I reread numerous times. Although I have not even seen this, the the actual Swedish version of the movie. Wait, there's a sweet. Oh, I didn't even realize they made it. Yeah. They, uh, all I know is the Daniel Craig 
James Bondish, whatever. Yeah, and they only made the girl with the dragon tattoo, but the Swedish version has uh, made all three, the first three books, um, and I still have not gotten around to watching them. Is it on Netflix? Uh, I think so. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Eventually. Eventually, I will. Um, so you had asked me a question before we started about adaptations. What did you mean about that? Did you? Oh mean yeah, no, no, no. I mean, and- honestly, like, what is your opinion on adaptations, movie or TV show adaptations of books? Oh, because right? there's the Lord of the Rings is like the movies with like Viggo Mortensen and Elijah Wood, right? That's a and or, Orlando Bloom. Got to mention Orlando Bloom. That's, yeah, don't forget about uh, Orlando I can't forget. Bloom. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> 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 no, it's it's a great. It's a great adaptation, especially considering that it's in movie form, because these books are really hard to, you know, distill into a two or three hour format. Yeah. Like it's it's impossibly difficult to do so and do it with or give do the books justice within that very limited frame. You know, you have these a lot of books that are converted into TV series like Game of Thrones, for example. Right. Not a perfect analogy here, but the Game of Thrones series is much better off as a long series where you can really flesh out character arcs and their development over time instead of having to rush everything, especially with a character uh, ensemble that huge. Right. Or cast of characters that huge. Mm -hmm. So, yes. um, I'm a fan of a good amount. I'm just to see them on uh, outside of their book form is a win for me. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. There are there are people that are like, no, the book was better. And of course, that's always even, the case. Yeah. They, but they won't even, they're closed-minded in a way and won't mm-hmm. even watch the movie. But I do think that um, I appreciate the open-mindedness when people do it. Does it always get done <laughs> correctly? Well, right, or no. Yeah. Does it do the book justice? Yeah. No. But it's nice to see... Um, you know, it was nice to see what Elizabeth Salander looks like. I mean, she had no eyebrows, so that was interesting. <laughs> yeah, publicizing it. Right? Yeah, it's it was nice to deal. see what um, what she looks like, which I'll just kind of segue real quick into what I'm reading now. I'm mm-hmm. actually, I just picked up a book um, called What We See When We Read by, um, I'm going to mispronounce this, Peter Mendelssohn. And... Um, He is a, I think he's a psychologist and he poses the question, what do you see when you read? What does, uh, the part I'm on now is what do you see? What does Anna Karenina look like? Whatever I might have seen on TV or in the movie. Yeah. Well, and interesting, I just finished the last page I left off of was they took, um, Tolstoy's um, description Mm -hmm. and gave it to, um, a sketch artist with the police department. Oh, no way. That's awesome. And yeah. it, it's interesting. Um, but he poses the question, essentially is posing the same question throughout what I've read so far mm-hmm. is what do you see? What does, what does um, Frodo actually look like? What does his house look like? What are you actually seeing? You know, give a little bit more description. So I think to the adaptations, it's nice to actually see that. Yeah, to build that visual language or visual awareness of it. But now that I'm reading this, I think, is that actually what I see? Or obviously now I'm allowing um, Elizabeth Elizabeth Salander's image on the movie screen affect how I read this book. Uh, You know, because... I, I and I I'd probably have to look for it, but I think they just gave her no eyebrows. I think she had eyebrows in the book. Rude. So <laughs> I think that was just a choice. It, it's it's interesting. So mm-hmm. I'm all for adaptations. I yeah. think, um, I think it's just as you said. It gives us a, a visual. Mm-hmm. Um, I will not buy movie covers. Wait, what? What's a movie when cover? when they've turned books into a movie, I will not oh, buy. Oh, I see what you cover. mean. Yeah, like when it, like Ender's Game, for example. Oh my I god, refuse. that was annoying. No, like now a major motion picture or something. Like I don't even that. want that on the book. Yeah, no hell no. Why? Why? No, Jesus, no. I don't need to know. Yeah, I don't need to know. Oh. You're ruining the sanctity I mean, of my library. They're commercializing it, which makes sense. Yeah, go go capitalism. But no, I'm not a fan of the move. Like I would, I'd enjoy the book in its pure you know, untainted form. And I'll just say, I don't know what's in my library right now, but if there is a movie cover book in here, it's probably a gift. Fair. Fair, yeah. <laughs> Let me protect you, myself. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm about to call you out as I know, soon as I, I see one. I started scanning the library real fast. Yeah, I nah, don't want I you to call me out. No, nah, I wouldn't hold it against you. It was most likely a gift. Yeah. Um, But what about... um? 
so you asked, uh, well, you posed the question, thoughts on writing someday or writing at all? What was, um, or do you remember, you remember Jordan Sparks, but I'm afraid to ask, do you remember <laughs> what your intention was for this question? Given your love of books and your, um, you know, familiarity with a form of storytelling, would you, could you see yourself making one or writing your own story someday? No. Autobiographical or fictional or whatever? Mm. Or are you in it to consume? Not that, probably, uh, I don't, I don't have, I, I don't have the create. I don't think I have the creativity to write a fictional piece. Yeah. Um, I've always thought of doing what, <laughs> what Allie did in the notebook where she wrote her, hers and Noah's story. When they were dying. I know when they died. That's okay. So I mean, Stop every... spoiling movies. Oh man. Stop wow. spoiling books and movies. Yeah. Rude. We've already done that three times. Yeah. This is going to have a massive spoiler like, <laughs> tag on, on the show notes. I know. But, um, I don't, I don't know if I have it in me. Um, I wrote a play in what? high school. I didn't know that. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, I could probably see myself writing a play, I think, because I could get, uh, I, I don't, I don't have the creativity to describe Sweden in a hundred pages or describe <laughs> a blade of grass for a hundred pages. Yeah. Uh, but I think I have the creativity, uh, to write a play and to give a character dialogue um, give somebody voice. I think that I would allow, I think in, I, I don't know very much about theater or anything like that, but I would give it to the director to paint the picture of what does this person look like? Does she need eyebrows or not? <laughs> it would be helpful. <laughs> it would be helpful. It'd be so distracting without it. Yeah. I wrote, I wrote a play in high school. Um, and <laughs> I really, really wanted it performed on stage, but it didn't. Uh, it was about a girl who was, or a, a young woman who was uh, preparing to get married. Mm -hmm. And I made her conscience a character. Oh, okay. Um, so the voice was off stage, uh, mic'd up. And she's having a conversation with her conscience and um, just tr trying to decide, am I marrying the right person or not? Uh, in that is is the groom I'm marrying or is it another guy? Um, and that's one of the big pieces I think I'll revisit when I go through all of my high school writings. I know you've seen some How I Met Your Mother. Yeah. You remember that one episode where Barney had a one-man show in New York? <laughs> yeah. You should do that with you. <laughs> it was, I think <laughs> this play of yours. I, think, I will voice the conscience. Yeah, I think. Just for fun. Yeah, and I remember who when we we didn't it didn't go on no, stage. Wait, that, if I voice the conscience, that means I can't slap you at the end. You cannot. I cannot. So it'd have to be someone else to voice it. Yeah. Yeah. I I remember we performed it in um in our writing class, okay. and we had the a friend of mine um sat to just for effects sat behind a podium and just kind of because you could speak inside the podium and it echoed so you could yeah. hear it but oh that's actually pretty cool yeah it's good theater work yeah yeah so i i think one day i would but i think deep down i'm just a i'm just a poet okay it's... i'm gonna i'm gonna set a reminder for 20 years <laughs> and, and like, what hey rachel how's that play coming along <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't do that. Lower your expectations. No, actually, hang on. I'm going to do that right now. <laughs> like, I'm literally doing it right now. Uh, what are you reading now? Um, finishing that Nelson's Navy that we uh, okay. just talked about. Okay. And that's kind of it right now. I mean, aside from that, I just finished a hurricane reading session <laughs> uh, for finals. And, you know, I mean, those books are great in retrospect now that I've actually like read them. Mm -hmm. Freaking awesome. That's how I feel about my college books. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's, I think that's how they all are. Yeah. Why do you think some people sort of shun reading? Why? Yeah. Okay. So actually, are you, you're familiar with like minimalist art, right? Oh, For example, okay. Um, when you look at a wall and it's maybe like this, this rectangular, horizontal rectangular painting that's three stripes. Okay. Three colors. And that thing is selling for trillions of dollars. <laughs> Right. And you think to yourself, what the hell? I could do that. <laughs> yeah. You know, but you didn't. And at the same time, you're know, like, what the hell is, why is this art? What is the, what is happening here? I think that that opinion right there is very endemic of our 
modern attitudes towards all forms of art, where art asks a lot of the viewer. You, you have to put in a certain amount of work and a certain amount of interpretation so you can get something out of it. You know, like movies don't ask you to do anything like that. TV shows don't ask you anything about that. Like pop music rarely asks you to, to invest, you know. So when you look at things like um, The Avengers, for example, right? I mean, I mean, there are people who do read into this and I'll, I, I enjoy those video essays on YouTube. They're freaking awesome. But... You know, you're just there for a some rush or some some emotional payoff. But when you look at a book, for example, you know the investment that you have to do is actually look at dead pieces of wood and start hallucinating. You, you have to you, put in more brain power. You have to put a lot of brain power and like build those worlds, those visual worlds. Like, what does a uh, what does Hobbiton look like? What does this and what does an Anna Karenina look like? Just because the author didn't write how this person felt, you have to construct that yourself, mm-hmm. right? There's a lot of work that needs to happen here. Just like looking at that minimalist painting of three colors, like what the hell am I supposed to feel here? You have to make that up. You have to you know, concentrate and think about it. And I think that's where a lot of this resistance to reading comes from. On top of looking at, you know, 200, 300, 500 pages worth of crap. Well, not crap, but I mean, th- you know, yeah. of material. People are like, I can spark notes that and then get the same thing. Or I can watch that on TV and get the same thing. Because it that, those don't take work. Mm-hmm. It's a sad thing. But that's people robbing themselves of the richness of the experience that actually reading it will get you or actually sitting down and thinking about that minimalist painting will get you, you know? So that's my rant on it. And No, that's, that's, I have to agree with you and more so because I never thought of it that way. There you go, yeah. Because I just, you know, that, that question, would you rather be blind or deaf? I I would rather be deaf as hell. I would rather be blind what? because if I'm not able to see Anna Karenina and what she looks like, mm-hmm. I can you can be damn sure I'm going to imagine her. I'm oh, going to okay. put in the work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I would rather be blind because <laughs> then I can have audiobooks and <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But I but it's just as I said, then I, I can visualize what Frodo looks like. And I think um I never thought of your theory and I didn't think of it that way because I just I think my brain is always working in that aspect. I'm always thinking. Mm-hmm. Um I'm always visualizing, putting in the work and trying to imagine what they look like or you know, what's happening. What does the fight scene in Lord of the Rings look like? Did yeah. it you know um, so that's interesting, and I guess now now I know why I, I learned something new today. Hey, that- <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good takeaway. Yeah, I'm not um, all debauchery and and alcoholism. It's speaking I've, of, I've got something going on. In have there. you ever read? I hope they serve beer in hell. Yes, I love that. Okay, yeah, that dude was my patron saint, the patron saint of my twenties and early thirties. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Did like, you read seriously? the rest of his books? No. Oh, no. they're just as good. There's uh, there's that one instance of the deaf girl that he was hooking up with, and that was awesome. Uh, my, I love that story. My favorite. So it's I hope I hope they serve beer in hell by Tucker Max. Yeah. Uh, and there's one other story in there where he's he's having sex with a girl in the bathroom in Vegas, and it's one of those doors <laughs> where every time you when you open it, it unfrosts. Yeah. And then when you close it, it frosts. So, so every time he's thrusting, <laughs> he's opening and closing the door because there's a line out the out the bathroom door mm-hmm. um but yeah you're debauchery yeah. i i have a signed copy i i oh, went that's to, awesome i yeah, went to go I, meet I him i see him yeah yeah that's definitely one i would know would be missing oh okay i'm definitely not touching those yeah yeah um i think for me uh there is a great love for books that i don't think i'd ever be able to really understand um, when I go into a bookstore, I will go to a bookstore to decompress and to just uh, bring myself back down to the ground and just to relax. Um, I Even holding a book for some reason just makes me feel pretty good. And mm-hmm. um, I think it just it, it for I guess after this, it makes me think or I'll just pose the question is what you know, what item or what is it about books that makes you feel this certain way? But um I guess it's a, what is it? I guess I'm a bibliophile and which is such a strange word sometimes I think, but um, it's a thing. It is a thing. 
it is a thing and I, I do hold my books near and dear. So uh, with that being said, I'll say thanks for listening and we will catch you next time. I'm going to I'm just going to say cuz I have no shame big dick Dion